What's going on folks? Today we're talking about growing Kentucky coffee tree from seed. I plan on doing this project as future bonsai trees, but these steps could apply to anybody who wants to grow one of these unique trees for themselves. I walk through the process to scarify, germinate, and grow these trees, and we'll deal with a few pests along the way at the end of the video. Let's get started. These are the pods, the seed pods from the Kentucky coffee tree. Uh, this is what you get. The seeds are inside here. Uh, these are just on a local tree on the block here, and uh, I picked these pods off of that tree this fall. Um, they were all kind of down within reach. There's actually a few pods out there still on the tree, uh, but they're too high out of reach. So I'm going to go with what I got here. It's a balmy two degrees out here. You can see there's some seed pods up in the tree still, and some of the, uh, the leaves are still attached here. So that is one of the leaves, and that would sprout out all along there with smaller leaflets. But you can see the bark is nice and flaky. And this is probably a 10 or 15 year old tree by the looks of it, but it's got some cool looking bark. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You gotta be saying to yourself, Herb, what are you talking about? That wasn't a leaf. You're right. What we saw in the ground there was actually what's called the rachis. Uh, so there's the rachis is the middle uh, main stem and then there are smaller stems that come out with uh, small leaflets on there and that's what's known as a, a pinnately bicompound leaf that's a mouthful but uh, so what that means is uh, that that whole thing can be one leaf so those leaves the leaves on the Kentucky coffee tree can grow up to three feet long and 24 inches wide but the leaflets themselves are only two inches on a full-grown tree so I don't know if that's gonna work well as a bonsai tree you never really see trees like that so I'm guessing it's not but I'm gonna find out so first thing we're gonna do is get the seeds out of these pods and uh, clean them up so let's take a look and see if we can get in here. And let's just hope there's no bugs living in here. Oh, it's brittle. I need some safety glasses here. Okay. So you can see there's one seed left down in there try and get that guy out of there. So these are, are not coffee beans, and I read that they are toxic to, to humans and animals. However, if you do roast them, um, they're not, they're no longer toxic. So you can actually make a coffee drink out of these. I'm, I, I've heard, I haven't tried that myself. Um, I've also heard that it's not very good, so. I probably won't try it. So these are really hard little beans that came out of there. So I'm just gonna clear the rest. I think when these hulls are fresh, this stuff is more of a Right now, it's it's rock hard. The stuff inside of the 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 shell here. But I think uh, earlier in the fall, when these were still in the tree, that was kind of like a softer material. It's, it's dried up since. There's the last one. Kind of, kind of has a smell like hay or straw. All right, there we go. So that's what we ended up with. Let's see. So we got three, six, nine, kind of eleven seeds. Uh, so I hear you can you can soak them in hot water or you can. Um, use a file or sandpaper. So now what we need to do is uh, put a, a nick on the hull of the seed so that 
uh, you know, the water, I think the water can get in and it can germinate. So, um, so you can use like a file, you can use sandpaper, maybe even a, a knife if you're careful. So I read that the Kentucky coffee tree seeds rarely germinate themselves in nature. They've evolved in an environment where prehistoric mammals like sloths and mammoths would chew up the pods and digest the seeds, in which case they would get that scar scarification process through that. And apparently they were uh, not affected by the, the toxic nature of the, the seed pods. So in order to germinate the seeds, you do need to scarify, which means you need to put a nick in the seed coat. And you can do that in any number of ways, uh, like sandpaper, a file, a saw, uh, soaking them in hot water, uh, putting them in a vise. Okay, so I, I've got a little saw here, a little dovetail saw out of a woodworking kit. and. What I'm gonna do, so this is a, a push saw, so just dragging is not necessarily cutting, so I'm just gonna drag once down the length or the width of this seed. So I just made a little, a little nick there. So let's try it again. Let's try it like this. So I'm gonna go down. Again, just a, a little nick there. So with my scarification, I this is the first time I've done this, so I was a little unsure. I started out with a woodworking file. Uh, that almost did practically nothing to the extremely hard seed coat. And I then moved on to a dovetail saw, and uh, that did a little bit better, but it was still actually very hard. Harder than uh, what you would expect with like a hardwood like maple or oak. I, while I did use the file and the saw to try and nick the seed coat and scarify it, I did end up also using the hot water method. So 10 out of the 11 seeds I had did germinate, so I had pretty good success rate. Um, uh, I think in the future I would probably go with the hot water method, just because with that you just dump all the seeds in the hot water, whereas if you want to scarify with a hacksaw or whatever you have, uh, you have to go through and do each and every one. Whereas with the hot water, you just dump them all in. For the hot water method, I brought it just to a boil, just where the bubbles were forming and starting to rise to the surface. I removed it from the heat for one minute, uh, dumped the seeds in. Uh, I did put a lid on it, it was a glass container, uh, and let it soak overnight. Um, I was only gonna let it soak overnight, but I got busy and they ended up soaking for a few days. It didn't seem to negatively affect them. So I did check the, the footage and the, the floater that uh, you'll see in the video was planted into this uh, wider pot here and the f one of the one that didn't come up was not a floater and it was it was planted in here this only three of the four came up in this pot so if you're interested in learning more about kentucky coffee tree i have a bunch of links from when i was researching about how to grow and and what this was i actually didn't know what a kentucky coffee tree was until uh, i was outside walking around and i saw this tree it had really kind of gnarly looking bark but it was a young tree so um that in that fall i saw the seed pod so i decided to collect some and uh that, that's what brought us here today all right folks here we are the next morning i did let these soak overnight i uh, put them in um, warm water here and let them soak you can see that the uh the shell outer shell on these is kind of flaking off it's still like uh, has a plasticky texture it's not mushy at all but they've all expanded quite a bit so I'm 
that one's floating, so I'm not sure if that's going to be a good one or not. But the rest of these have all expanded pretty substantially, so I, I think that they've all kind of successfully been scarified. Now I just need to germinate them. All right, folks, here we go. So these guys have actually been in water for a few days now, probably long, definitely longer than necessary. So I want to get these in some soil as soon as possible. So I'm going to put some soil in this and let's get these guys planted. I don't, I don't know if there's enough room in here. We'll have to see. All right, so I'm going to try and film and, and do this at the same time. So that one's floating. I don't even know if that one's any good. But if you take a look at these... That coating, that really kind of hard coating on there, is just sort of dissolving right off of there. Okay, so there we go. We got seven seeds in there, and we got four more here that I'm going to find another little container for, and we'll get those planted up. So uh, what I'm going to do is just pour enough dirt, uh, or, well, potting mix, which is about 50-50 perlite and pea. So I'm just going to put in enough to cover these and keep them moist. And I'm just going to put some dirt over these like I did here and water them and we'll be all wrapped up. Today is the 25th of December. Now, looking under the leaves here, I did find aphids on a couple of leaves. Like, here, let's check this one. Nothing there now. So, here you can see there is an aphid on this leaf. So, we want to get rid of him. It looks like this leaf next to him. Oh, yeah. So here you can see one of the aphids up close. Uh, you want to get rid of these guys. Usually, usually they're going to be on the bottom side of the leaf. It looks like this one may have just molted. Um, but usually they're going to be on the bottom side of the leaf, sucking the life out of it. And that's why you want to get rid of them as soon as possible. So I hate to spray soap on here just because they are such young seedlings. I, what I've been doing is just picking them off by hand and getting rid of them. I, I don't see any more on here. That definitely does not mean they're not here because they are sneaky and they're really good at hiding and blending in. But uh, yeah, it's looking good. My original intention was not to use these as a forest. However, they look kind of good together and they might be a little tight together too. So I don't know. Um, I kind of do like the way they look together though. So what do you think? Should I do these? Should I leave this as a forest or should I separate these? Are they going to be too tightly packed together eventually to make a good forest? I feel like once they get a little bit larger they're going to be kind of right on top of each other. So I've never done a bonsai forest before. So let me know what you think. I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of inclined now to leave these as a forest. Um, I think they're looking really, they could look really cool. Let me know. There were four planted in here and only three came up. Now the original aphids that I saw were on this pot. I don't see any here now. Wait. I don't know what that was. Oh yeah, here's one. So here you can see another aphid. He's hiding pretty well. So if we take a look, he's right there. So he's he's really hard to see until you get right up close and then you can see him in there. So he, he's getting after it and uh, 
I'm not too happy about that. So we're going to get rid of this guy. So these curling leaves are a good indicator of an insect that might be, you know, sucking the sap out of the leaves and you know, damaging the health of the tree. So you definitely want to remove them as soon as possible. Well, there you have it, folks. The trees are still looking good, growing well, and coming along nicely. I will keep you updated on their progress, but until that time, I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.